What's going on, people? WandaVision Episode 4 is brought to you by the letter M. M as in Meta, M as in House of M, M as in Mutants, and Mephisto. But before we go any further, I'm Antonio Ache, and this is Kamra. So right here is your spoiler warning. We appreciate you trying to support the channel, but if you don't want Episode 4 ruined for you, click away now until after you've seen it and then come back. Don't watch this and accidentally get the episode spoiled for you. You know who you are. They start this one off by showing us what happened to Geraldine after she was kicked out of Westview and what happened to Monica, her real name by the way, before she was even brought into Westview. Turns out Maria Rambeau, who we saw in Captain Marvel, actually started out S.W.O.R.D., which is the sentient world observation and response division in the comics. But in the MCU, it is the sentient weapon observation and response division. Similarly to how General Ross referred to Hulk and Thor as missing weapons in Civil War, Wanda now falls into that category. So Monica's story starts off with her returning to the organization after the snap, and her first mission is a missing persons case that brings her in contact with FBI agent Jimmy Woo. Apparently, Monica's mom used the call sign Photon, and that's probably going to be the name that she uses when she finally comes into her powers. This episode is very meta in that Agent Wu, who we previously saw in Ant-Man and the Wasp, and Darcy from the Thor movies come to the same conclusions that we have while they're watching this show like we are. They ask the same questions we ask. They even get invested in what we know is a fabricated reality that's not meant to last. Only nine episodes, guys? Like... At one point, we see Wu writing on a board that has all of these questions and theories on it. And they're questioning the hexagonal designs. They're questioning who's behind it, and I was thinking that the designs were something to do with like AIM being a part of S.W.O.R.D., but I don't really know anymore, honestly, on that end. But I do know that one of those words for the who done it said scrolls, and that's crazy to me, because since Captain Marvel's movie, we've only seen the scrolls as good guys who are on our side, even going as far as to have people like Talos actually working with Nick Fury. Are we wrong in thinking that they're good guys? Maybe there's like a rogue faction of them that are out there doing some unruly stuff and that's what we're going to be seeing in the Secret Invasion series that's going to hit Denzel Plus soon. While Darcy is trying to explain exactly how she came to realize that they were going to be on a TV show, she's talking about the energy that this whole area is displaying and she tries to explain it to them but she's cut off with the synopsis that this is Big Bang level energy. What did the Big Bang start? evolution of everything in the universe as we know it. And what's the next stage of evolution on Earth? Homo sapiens superior. That's right. Mutants, baby. Give me my mutants. You got them, Feige. I know you do. So in the House of M storyline, the loss of her kids and her brother and Vision all are the focal points that make her lose her mind. And it's looking like that's still going to be the case here. My thought is that once S.W.O.R.D. breaks in and starts to threaten everything she's worked so hard to save, the ensuing clash will result in near-irreparable damage to reality and, by extension, the multiverse. The difference here is that we don't have Xavier in the MCU yet to attempt to help her reconstitute her mind, so instead we're going to have Doctor Strange try to do it in his next movie. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, which is supposed to have intense horror movie elements, is going to follow this directly. And we got our first glimpse of horror movie elements in this episode when the previous reality bled in after Monica mentioned Pietro's death. I wanted to put her out, but right after that, for a brief moment, she saw the ghastly visage of the skull-crushed vision, and that was just unsettling. Now, all of that took place, but the outside world didn't get to see it because the broadcast that's going out to Darcy and them for some reason is being edited or censored by someone, and I don't think it's Wanda. Enter the last M, Mephisto. Now, there were no direct mentions that I caught in this episode, but that's because we spent most of this episode from the outside looking in. I firmly still believe that he's the executive producer of this little show that we're witnessing. I think I noticed everything that's gone into this field has been changed, and when it comes out, it stays that way. So the drones that went in changed, haven't seen them come out just yet. Uh, the sword agent's tether that became a jump rope and that's why it disconnected. When it came back out, it was still a jump rope in the regular reality. Monica's clothes when she went in altered to how they were supposed to be for that uh, reality. And so when she came out, they were the same way. What's to say that Vision won't eventually do the same thing? 
the episode comes to a close and the credits roll as Voodoo Child by Jimi Hendrix is played. I know they chose this for a reason. It could be interpreted as Wanda having a voodoo child because Wiccan goes on to be a super powerful, uh, supernatural individual. But I'm pretty certain it's because Wanda herself is the voodoo child. And like the song states, she's creating a world of her own, which is made all the more evident by Monica stating at the very end of the episode that this is Wanda doing this. She has control of this realm. As usual, when the episode comes to an end, all we have is theories and questions for next week. If you guys theorize similar to us or have completely opposing theories, let us know in the comments. If you dug this video, give it a like. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss a single thing that we got coming. Um, there's four or five episodes left and it just it doesn't feel like enough, honestly. I don't know. But we're good because right after this ends, we've got Falcon and the Winter Soldier coming. So we're going to have a lot more stuff for you. Anyway, I've been Antonio Ache, and this is Comrade, where we do nerdy reviews with the occasional boost. Anyway, I've been Antonio Ache, and this is Comrade. I'm gonna do that one more time. I don't know what the fuck I was doing with my hand. <laughs>